how close are we towards the HIV cure? Because this is one of the most studied viruses in medical history. Around 1980, people are getting a strange illness. You get it, you just die. It's viral in nature. And around 1983, Luke and also Robert Garlom were able to isolate HIV virus and get to understand a little bit more about it. But this is not a cure, but this is the milestone that you need to start off if you are trying to look for a cure for a certain illness. You have to understand the causative agent and how to inactivate it and the ways you can able to kill it without harming the human body. By 1987, this thing was causing havoc. There is no cure. Yes, they know the causative agent, but there is no cure. There is no prophylaxis. There is nothing that they can use against it. And it was killing people. That's when in 1987, after scratching their heads, they came up with their first antiretroviral, that's AZT, Zidovudin. It was approved by FDA for use in control against HIV. And it works, but partially. It was not that effective. And also the other thing is it was toxic to the liver. But at least now we have hope. We have something that is acting against HIV. The best that we can do is to make it stronger and also reduce the effect that this drug is having on the body because it was toxic to the liver. And if we make it better, then I think we are getting hope. We are getting somewhere. Scientists continued scratching their heads because there is a newfound avenue. They need to explore it further to make the drug better and even more effective. So they were able to come up with other drugs that are still ARVs that are targeting other regions of the HIV infection cycle. And remember, at this point, people are still dying because one, we still don't have a cure. Second, the ARVs are toxic to the liver in as much as it's still effective. But it's a work in progress. We are not from zero, we are at least somewhere. And that's where in around 1996, they were able to come up with a regime where they combined the drugs that were available then, the ARVs that were available, and then put them together, give them to a patient, and uh, try to reverse the effects of AIDS. And uh, it was working because it started reducing the mortality rate. By using this regime, you are approaching the virus from various angles. Can be you're preventing it from integrating the host or reverse transcription. You have various steps when it comes to the infection, and every stage had a drug that was targeting it. So combination gave people a lot of hopes because it was able to reduce mortality rates at a really, really significant level. But then you might assume now that you have drugs that can easily target various steps in the HIV replication cycle, it's going to be very easy to eradicate it because once it's not able to infect any cell, then it will by default die. But then another road broke. Around 1999, scientists discovered that this virus is able to escape several things. One, the drugs and also the immune system by doing several things. One, integrating the host genome. Once it gets to the cell, it's able to hide their dormant and stay dormant. So meaning that this is a new reservoir. Also, the virus is able to get into the central nervous system and hide there waiting for that time when it will be reactivated and, you know, cause an infection or make new viruses. Now, eradication of this virus became even harder because of two things. It's affecting the white blood cells. These are the soldiers of the body that fights the viruses, the bacteria, the fungi, and any other pathogen. It's kind of like the same thing robbers would hijack a police station and decide to do whatever they want because now there is no security. And to make it even extra harder, it integrates with the DNA inside that particular cell. Number two, this virus was able to escape the host immune system by getting to immune privileged areas, like in your CNS making it harder for your immune system to get there and kill it. This meant two things. Once infected by that virus, it's there to stay. Number two, you will have to use the ARVs forever because once you stop using them, then those things that are hiding there in the reservoirs will come out and make new copies and you'll end up having AIDS. The struggle continued and around 2007, a functional biological cure happens. He is the only person ever to be cured of HIV and AIDS, but his cure was somewhat of an accident. Timothy Ray Brown had been living with HIV for years when he received the devastating news. He had leukemia. That is this patient who was suffering from leukemia and coincidentally also had HIV. One of the therapy for leukemia and especially towards the end stages is bone marrow transplant. And I guess what happened now? Let's talk about HIV immune people. Those are people, now HIV getting to your cell, that's your CD4 cell, those are white blood cells that have CD4 plus markers on their surface. They also require another 
antigen on the service for entry into your cell. Now, this is HIV, get to your cell in a must find CD4 marker there. That's an antigen. Also, for it to get into the cell, it must verify that this is the right cell. So it looks for another antigen that we call CCR5. That's a core receptor. So both of them must be there for that HIV virus to get into the cell and start replicating. Unfortunately, we have very few of them in the population, but they are there and they are known. Now, how about we take their bone marrow and transplant it to that patient who is suffering from leukemia. We try to cure leukemia and try to see what will happen to HIV. Unfortunately, HIV decided to disappear because what happens here you're getting cells new cells because you'll have to remove the old bone marrow and then implant new ones and they'll come with new populations of cells that cannot be able to be infected by hiv because of that mutation and timothy became the first patient to be cured of hiv this is a huge step in hope toward curing hiv but again several obstacles the first one is it's too expensive to conduct bone marrow transplant and also getting to get a donor they are few i'm sure you know host versus graft reactions those are things that we really worry about when it comes to transplantation of someone's tissue into another person so the procedure is not looking commercially viable but it's a functional cure so at least there is hope in as much as it's a little bit not that tenable because of the things that we've mentioned now everyone knew that yes we are trading toward the right direction and um, as usual scientists continued scratching their heads and around 2010 they thought how about we start ARVs as soon as possible like that baby is born positive and we just initiate them on ARVs as soon as they land on this planet and they started doing that so remission was there yes remission of the HIV for a long period of time but then eventually HIV will come back and uh, back to the drawing board around 2012 scientists were like yeah that did not work we really need to go to the earlier version of the cure because starting someone early on ARVs is not you know giving us hope towards the actual cure so goes back to the earlier version of that but how did they do this now instead of getting the transplantation which is risky because you know that they decided how about we do gene editing we just go to the cell we edit the gene that expresses for ccr5 and then we deny hiv entry to the cell and you're going to notice changes in this gene editing approach but let's go to 2013 around 2013 the Mississippi baby was born of HIV, put immediately on ARVs and then left without treatment and uh, for two years. And that HIV was in remission for that period of time, but then came back, as usual, if you remember the earlier case. But this gave us hope in an early approach when it comes to treatment of HIV. One year later, scientists were like, how about we activate this dormant virus, which is lying somewhere that we cannot be able to reach? How about we reactivate it and then kill it? Was it successful? Now, two years later, they come up with a, a broad neutralizing antibodies. Antibodies that will neutralize anything HIV. It doesn't care whether it's HIV 1 or 2. Just neutralize it. That's two years later, around 2016. At this time, people are like, yeah, the earlier version of the cure where someone was transplanted with bone marrow that had a CCR5 mutation in it and got cured of HIV, that was just a, a one-off. But in 2017, Another patient got cured of HIV. Similarly, transplantation with a bone marrow that contains cells which had a mutation in CCR5. This happened in Berlin and it is cemented the fact that yes, we can use this approach to cure HIV completely from the body. Two years later, that's around 2019, told you to keep an eye on gene editing approach. Scientists were like, how about now instead of inactivating the CCR5 region, how about we just cut using CRISPR? Those are, we have scissors, we have molecular scissors. How about we cut the region where HIV has integrated into? It's a very good approach. But this one turned out to be too risky because here we are tampering the DNA. How about we clip the region which we did not intend? What will be the repercussions? And one year later, so 2020, another patient, you know, received the same treatment, the earlier one. You know, you modify the bone marrow, then you implant, and then HIV psh, disappears. That's what happened. This is another patient. Now we have another case which is confirming to us, yeah, there's a possible cure. And you can see the theme here. They're trying to push towards, you know, that mutation, that door through which HIV is getting into the cells through. How about we just, you know, lock it? Two years later, around 2022, still continuing along the same therapy line. That's the mutation. A mixed race woman got cured of HIV and guess where they got the stem cells from? Now, instead of getting that from a bone marrow of a person with that mutation, they got it from the cord cells. We have stem cells in the cord blood. So they got that implanted in that lady and she got cured of HIV. Now you can see where we are headed. 
cord blood stem cells are more accessible compared to bone marrow stem cells. So this is trying to move toward more sustainable supply of the stem cells. It's looking good at this point. So in 2023, I know you, you've heard about CAR T. So now you have a tumor. This was more of oncology and they're trying to domesticate it toward fighting HIV. Now, this is where you have a tumor, you have a cancer. Then we grab some of the cancer cells and then we turn them against the other cells meaning that we modify it and then because they can move to recognize the cancer cells, we put them back and then they'll just go and start fighting off the tumor. We've had success stories in this one, a very interesting approach. And how about if we now create the cells that will go and recognize the cells that have been infected by HIV and then we kill them. So that's another approach. In 2024, a very interesting approach. Let's put three things that we know are working against HIV and put that in one patient and see whether it's actually going to work, either to induce uh, permanent remission or a possible cure. And what do they do? Do you remember reversing the latency and also gene therapy and also broad neutralizing antibodies? They put that together and then we are waiting to see how that turns out too. I, I hope it turns out to be good. 2025, a very interesting drug here. This is a PrEP. We have PEP which is post-exposure. You get exposed to HIV, you take them, you don't get HIV. We have PrEP. You are going to a point where you might get exposed to HIV, then you take PrEP. That you take a drug that will prevent you from getting the HIV before you get exposed. And then we have ARVs, that's when you got HIV, uh, you use ARVs. Now in the PrEP category, those are drugs that you take before getting exposed to HIV to prevent you from getting it. There's a drug, a very interesting one, Lenacapavir, that you would take, just you get one shot and it will take you through for six months. And those, that means only two shots in a year. And this is given to those who are HIV negative to prevent them from getting HIV. So you go out there, get exposed. You're not going to get it because you have then a cup of in your system. Still getting tested, showing some promising results. So I'll also follow up on this to see how it turns out to be because this one looks like a very good prophylaxis. Still in 2025, I think a month ago, a very interesting approach. Now you see, do you remember, talked about gene editing, a very interesting approach. Now you see, it's a patient with a mutation that made it very hard for the liver to process ammonia. You know, conversion of that urea to ammonia, which is less toxic to the body. If you cannot be able to do that, then it becomes very hard for you. Now that they use CRISPR to edit out that region that was giving that person that mutation and that baby was able to live long there after being up to this point. They were able to recover and they are doing good up to this point. Now, thinking of HIV, we can do the same. We can edit that part. You remember the scissors? How about we cut that region where that HIV is integrating into and then we remove that completely using this CRISPR. If you look at the progress since HIV came to picture up to now, we've made a lot of progress. And the amount of information we've gathered is a lot. Just a matter of time now before something happens and we're able to come up with a pure cure which is accessible to everyone. And I'm begging because now at this point, we know patenting and stuff can make things very expensive. How about we get a cure and it's accessible to everyone? We eradicate this HIV once and for all like we did on a polio. And by the way, we really need to do something on polio because we have some episodes of it coming back despite it being one of the viruses we were able to eradicate things are looking very promising and as scientists who's really interested in genomics and who's doing something on genomics i would really want to be part of this life-changing event because it sounds like it's almost here i don't want to be part of it 